everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. My guest today is Caroline Israel, and she's going to be talking about harnessing the power of your thoughts to stick to a whole food plant-based diet. Please welcome her to the show. Nice to see you again. Hey there. How are you? I'm good. I'm, I'm kind of nervous, but uh, otherwise I'm pretty good. Uh, well, you look good. So that's hey, what's so, important. That's the most important part. <laughs> well, so, so we have a lot of guests on the show talking about a plant-based diet, but we've never really talked about how our thoughts could help us stick to it. But before you tell us that, why do you think some people have a hard time sticking to it, Caroline? Well, I think it goes back to your frequent guest, uh, Doug Lyle, and the fact that we're animals and we're programmed to uh, eat high calorie food when it's available. I think, I really think that's the, the ultimate thing. And now that we, we live in a world where there's high calorie food, high calorie, you know, highly processed, highly palatable food available for really cheap, you know, at every corner, um, at any time of night or day and it's, and it's legal and everybody's doing it. So yeah, it makes it very hard. Absolutely. Do you think the hard part for the people are the animal products or the processed food or both? Well, that's a good question. For me, it was processed food because I quit eating animals. That was easy for me when I read Animal Liberation many years ago. And uh, in fact, that's a big part of why I do this work that I do is because I love animals. And I think the best way to save the most animals is to help people be uh, follow a healthy uh, plant based diet and not just a, a vegan diet that 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 they'll still uh, struggle with and then go back to eating animal products because they're not healthy. So um, I try to encourage people to, to follow a you know, whole food vegan diet uh, and uh, to, to help save the animals. Yeah, absolutely. So um, how do our thoughts help us do this? Well, I, I want to start off by asking a question of the viewers, if I may. Um, I want to ask y'all, when is the last time you ate something off your plan, off your food plan? And if you don't have a food plan, uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. But um, if you don't have a food plan, when's the last time you ate something that you don't think you should have eaten, you know, uh, that you thought, oh, I wish I hadn't eaten that or I shouldn't be eating this or whatever. So kind of put yourself in that situation for a moment. And then I want you to answer this question. What was going through your mind? What was going through your mind before you decided to eat that thing? And I want you to write that down because we're going to use it later, hopefully. So... So, um, and, and then before I talk more about automatic thoughts uh, and, and how your thoughts affect, you know, affect what you eat, I wanted to review the, 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 the stuff we talked about last time. Um, I talked about four, what I think are necessary components to sticking to a whole food plant-based diet, you know, for the rest of your life. And uh, the number one component, I'll give you all a moment to try to remember what it is. And, and AJ answered that question last time. AJ, do you remember what, what's probably the most important predictor of behavior? Wow. Um, well, um, past behavior. Uh, well, uh, well, that that's that's certainly a that, that's certainly that's actually that, that that might even be true or actually. But um, I'm thinking of the environment. Oh yeah. Oh well, heck, I yeah, yeah, know yeah. that. That's all I talk about. If it's in your house, yeah, it's that's, that's right. That's right. It's, yeah. if it's in your house. It's, it's in your mouth. So, um, so yeah. So environment. So that one is still super important. And no amount of brain power will probably overcome, um, you know, candy kisses sitting on your desk or even candy kisses hidden away in the basement. Uh, cause the, the mind knows, knows they're there. So I really encourage people agree to with you more. I was talking to a friend who's basically whole food plant-based SOS free. And she goes, I feel so sick. I got into my boyfriend's chocolate chips last night. Right. Yes. It's very hard. And of course it's harder if you live with somebody. Uh, and that's when you have to start working, you know, negotiating, working together uh, to it, it's even hard, it's still hard for me, y'all. I've been doing this forever and I know all these tricks, but a friend of mine uh, likes to buy fresh baked bread at the farmer's market. And then we come to my house for a giant salad. But uh, I, it's very hard for me not to eat the fresh baked bread. So finally, I said, you know, would you mind not not bringing that over here? Because it's just a struggle that I don't need. So. So, uh, so that's number one necessary component for sticking to a healthy uh, food plan. Uh, and number two is a food plan. Uh, I, I it, you know, learned how to get, get on, this, on this way of eating by following a food plan. And I mean really a specific food plan where uh, every night for quite a while, I would make a food plan for the next day, a spe you know, specific, not just 
I'm going to eat whole plant foods tomorrow, but you know, I'm going to eat oats and fruit and flax for breakfast. And I'm going to eat a giant salad with beans for lunch. And I'm going to eat, you know, a steam fry for supper. I mean, I got very specific. So um, that way there's no uh, room for uh, wiggle room, because if you wait until you're actually hungry to decide what to eat, uh, deci yeah, decision-making is, is hard. Uh, you're, you're at a low willpower state when you're hungry or, or in a hurry. Uh, so if you've already decided, then that that's half the battle. Um, so number three necessary component is a food log. So in order to know uh, that that's one way of tracking, you know, how you're doing. So I make a food plan at night and then the next night I'll look at my food plan and see what I, uh, what I ate, what I did right. And what I, where I, where I, you know, uh, diverged. And then you know, there, a lot can be learned from that. So I really highly encourage people to keep a food log. And, and nowadays it's real easy because you can just get an app and, uh, and make it quick and painless. Although a lot of my clients still like to do it the old fashioned way. And that's fine too. Um, and then the fourth uh, component here is delay tactics. So uh, the more delay tactics you have, and by delay tactic, I mean, you know, you have a craving, you know, I really want some of those, my boyfriend's chocolate chips. Well, that's not, you know, that's not on my food plan. And um, what, what can I do first? Let me try something first. And it could be any number of things. I mean, I love uh, doing something active, um, like go for a walk around the block, for instance, uh, but you know, if that's not possible, do some jumping jacks or do some push-ups. That, that's one, one way to look at it. Or you can do something else entirely like, well, let me set the timer for 15 minutes. And then if I still want it, I can have it. So there's any number of, um, a delay tactic could really be anything. I'll call a friend, anything to put it off, uh, with the goal being to stick to your food plan in this moment, right, right this moment, you know, not tomorrow or uh, 10 years from now, but right now, let me just stick to my food plan right now. So if you can institute a delay tactic and then even if you still eat it, you know, if you go for a walk around the block and then you're like, I still want to, I got to have those chocolate chips. Great. That's, that's just fine. Uh, you, you've still, you've started the process of learning uh, some discipline uh, and, and not responding to your cravings instantaneously. So that's something, if you practice that regularly, that will take you a long way and you'll find that it gets easier to wait longer and longer. And at some point you're like, well, yeah, this chocolate chips, yeah, that still sounds good, but I think I'm over that now. So, uh, so, so those are the four things that I really encourage people to do. Um, and then the fifth, kind of the fifth wheel, I guess, is, is gonna be the automatic thoughts or, or your thoughts. Um, any, AJ, do you have any questions or does anybody yeah, have Yeah, well, any? no, no, I was thinking about what you were saying because, you know, I answered the question myself when I posted it in the chat, which is when is the last time you ate something off your food plan or something you shouldn't have and what was going through your mind? And it, uh, it was September of 2012. And it really did come down to the environment because in my environment, there is no raw vegan tiramisu. Uh-huh, right. Resist. And I was in a place that was there. And what was going through my mind was the usual, uh, well, I'll just take one bite. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. That's a great, that's a great um, automatic thought. I'll just take one bite. Um, yes. And yes, the environment is, is crucial. Uh, because, yeah, if you hadn't been in that environment, you wouldn't have been having that thought to begin with. But sometimes we will find ourselves in that environment. So, so, and also some people we'll keep a clean house, but they still, you know, go out frequently to get food. So they still need some shoring up these, uh, this, this thinking uh, can help a lot uh, to, to, you know, to stop that kind of eating. But um, if your environment is polluted um, in that, in that sense, it makes it a lot harder because then uh, you spend up a lot of, you, you eat up a lot of willpower, just resisting what's, what's at your house. And yeah. then when you go out, it's even harder to resist uh, those, you know, those foods. So I think if you can control your situation, control whatever you can control uh, and save your willpower for the outside world where you have no control. You know, I have a saying, I don't say it a lot, but it, it's if environment is right, willpower is of no need. If environment is wrong, willpower is of no use. Yeah, right. Yeah. I mean, yes, you, we can only, you can only white knuckle it for so long um, before uh, it's like, you know, I give up. Absolutely. So, um, so let us move into uh, the thinking part. Um, and I'm going to be talking about automatic thoughts. And when I asked the question, you know, what was going through your mind, I was trying to elicit some automatic thoughts. 
And um, these automatic thoughts really, they rule our lives uh, around food and everything else. Um, and there are three steps to mastering your automatic thoughts or to, to, to learn and to deal with them. And the first one is to become aware of them. So many people are not aware of their automatic thoughts. Um, and, and a lot of these thoughts are kind of lurking under the surface, just under the radar. Um, so, you know, I don't know why I ate it. I just, I just ate it. Um, but there is some justification under the, under the hood there. And, and some people might have to work harder to root it out, but we'll talk more about that uh, as we, as we progress. Um, in fact, I just wanted to ask, did anybody have any trouble coming up with a, a thought that they had, you know, in their, in their latest, uh, in, in their most recent situation where they ate off plan? Guys, post to what your thought was, because people are, uh, are posting what the food was, uh, Cracker Jacks, Cheerios, uh, chocolate biscuits, but oh, chocolate nobody's biscuits. seeing what their thoughts are. It usually does involve some kind of seems refined sugar or refined <laughs> flour. Uh huh. And uh, yes, and so uh, as we uh, you know continue to, to move along, again thinking about what was going through my mind when I choose those uh, those chocolate biscuits when I chose those chocolate biscuits. Is that a British person? Because we don't we don't think about chocolate biscuits here. Is that like a cookie? Is that like a chocolate cookie? <laughs> Oh, that's funny. <laughs> Nothing against British people, of course, uh, but um, that's funny. And then that's funny. That's that's the only one that stands out for me. I don't remember anything else you said. Oh, Cracker Jacks. Oh, I remember Cracker Jacks. I love. I used to love those. Um, so yeah, think about what was going through my mind when I chose those Cracker Jacks or the, that chocolate biscuit. Um, so that's the first step to mastering automatic thoughts is beca just becoming aware of them. And the second step is learning to distinguish. Uh, the two types of automatic thoughts. So the first type is, is helpful. Some of our automatic thoughts are helpful, like, hmm, a salad sounds really good today. You know, that would be a helpful automatic thought. And then other thoughts are, are not so helpful, like, mm, I don't want a salad. You know, so I'm going to have something else instead. Something else about automatic thoughts is that sometimes, uh, whether, whether they're true or not, for instance, I don't want a salad. Well, maybe that is true. Uh, so that's a, that's an example of a, an automatic thought that that could be true. I don't want a salad. Uh, sometimes the automatic thoughts are, are not true. Like I don't have time to make a salad. That that may or may not be true that I don't have time to make a salad. Uh, and some automatic thoughts are kind of in between. So, but but what's important here is not whether the automatic thought is true or not. It doesn't matter at all. In fact, but what's important is is it helpful? Does this thought that just popped into my head does it help me? get where I want to go. So the, the way to distinguish a helpful from a harmful automatic thought in this, in this case is to ask the question, does this thought make me want to stick to my food plan? It's that simple. Does this thought make me want to stick to my food plan? Because there are lots of tricky automatic thoughts out there. And some of y'all might've had them like, um, gosh, this is so much better than what I would have eaten in the past. And that might be true. That might be one of those true automatic thoughts. But does that thought make me want to stick to my food plan? Or does it make me want to eat Cracker Jacks, which at least they don't have any fat, you know, or whatever, uh, whatever justification is there. Uh, but no, it doesn't make me want to stick to my food plan. So that's how we know it's not helpful. Or another common one. Um, I worked out earlier today. So it's okay for me to eat uh, some chocolate biscuits. Or, or how about this? I, I'm going to work out for an hour later today. So, so therefore it's okay for me to eat these chocolate biscuits. So again, we would say, well, that thought, no, that thought doesn't make me want to stick to my food plan. It makes me want to eat chocolate biscuits or Cracker Jacks. So that would be, you know, an unhelpful uh, automatic thought. Yeah. Here's one from Vicki. My thoughts with Cracker Jacks, they're vegan. Popcorn is good for you. So are peanuts. Oh, so uh, it's just a bit of sugar that is not good for me. Uh -huh. Those are great automatic thoughts. Those are so good. So we're going to talk about how to work with those, work with those later. Uh, but yes, those are great examples of automatic thoughts that are not helpful because naturally they make you want to deviate from your food plan, not stick to your food plan. So now the third step to mastering automatic thoughts is learning how to deal with them. So now, you know, once you get clear on your uh, automatic, uh, your harmful automatic thoughts, then now, now what do we do? Um, 
so let us, uh, I'm trying to decide if I want to, are there any other questions? First let of all, let me look, let me look. Uh, Rachel says, this is absolutely fantastic. Um, he, oh yeah, here's one. How can we harness our thoughts when we're under stress and I end up stress eating a lot? And Aaron wants to know, do you recommend a specific food plan app? Uh-huh. So let me write that down, food plan app. I do, I do not really have a specific one. I'd say find one that you'll use, just find one that you enjoy and that you'll use. So, uh, you know, I guess you could potentially use Dr. Gregor's, you know, um, daily dozen, but I haven't really experimented with that myself to see, if, you know, if that would work, but, and, and it doesn't really, um, actually it doesn't allow you to break it down in breakfast, lunch, and supper. So, um, you know, uh, I would rather have you be specific about each meal, at, at least for the first couple of years, you know, of your process. Um, and the, and the question before that, tell me again what that was. Um, cause that was a great, um, a great question. Um, but I'm bummed uh, yeah, about stress. So, so the oh, yeah, stress eating. Thank you. Uh, I need to write these things down. Uh, sorry. Now I have a doggy. I gave them Kongs, but they're now they're going to this again. <laughs> Maybe they're uh, stress barking. They're stress barking. That's right. Stressing how much they want another Kong. Um, so uh, again, with the, it's the same with stress eating is that I would want you to see what's going through your mind, you know, and, and I'm going to give you a secret, a secret way to kind of route that out, which is to ask, uh, to finish this question or finish this sentence. It's okay for me to eat this because... So you're in the middle of a stressful situation and you're reaching for the Cracker Jacks. So what is the justification? It's okay for me to eat these Cracker Jacks because, and then you might say, uh, oh, it's, it's, it's popcorn. Popcorn is good for you. Or um, it's not really that much sugar. Or, um, you know, I, I gotta, I can't help it. I've, I've just gotta, I've gotta calm down. I have to eat something. So any of those could be the automatic thought that, are, that, that allows you to, to go ahead and follow through with the off plan eaten. Does that? Yeah. It's does that vegan, sense? but it's vegan. And it's vegan. Yes. It's okay for me to eat this because at least it's vegan, right? So, um, so that is a part of, yes, generating those automatic thoughts. Don't, don't let yourself off the hook by saying I'm stress eating. You have to get clear on the automatic thought. In fact, that's one of the things that can get in the way of, uh, of learning how to use your thoughts in your favor is just saying it, I was stress eating or, you know, um, you know, my, my friend died or, or whatever we need needing to get clear on what, what is the justification for this episode of eating and, you know, ideally in the moment. Now, even if you don't catch it in the moment, you can do it later. That's kind of what we're, we were doing earlier is that you, uh, think back about the last time you ate something off your food plan and, and, and think, well, what was going through my mind? And that's a, that's a great way to learn. Uh, because it, at first it's in the moment you, you might forget. I, I don't know. I just, I just want to eat and I'm not thinking about any thoughts right now. Uh, so doing it in retrospect is very helpful. Um, another thing that can get in your way of identifying your, uh, automatic thought is to say, I give myself permission. Um, or, you know, a lot of times people will say, oh, I just gave myself permission for that. So again, I would say dig a little deeper and fill, finish out that sentence. It's okay for me to eat this because, and it's probably not going to be because I give myself permission. It's going to be because it's vegan or nobody's perfect, or I can't eat this way all the time. So hopefully some of those automatic thoughts are resonating with y'all. Um, so I just want you to finish out that sentence. It's okay for me to eat this because, and once you get clear on your automatic thoughts, um, then it's time to deal with them. Now what? And there's a number of, of ways to deal with them, but probably the easiest way for us to do that now is just to kind of think about coming up with some good responses. So um, let's take that automatic thought. Well, it's vegan. It's vegan. So it's okay for me to eat these Cracker Jacks because they're vegan. So what, um, you know, what are some arguments against that? Just because it's vegan, you know, doesn't mean it's healthy, right? Just because it's vegan doesn't mean it's healthy. That that's right. In fact, I did a talk, uh, like that, uh, one time and that, that's what, that was the title. It just because it's vegan doesn't mean it's healthy or in being vegan is not enough, you know, to maximize your health potential. So, um, 
Uh, so generating some thoughts, and I would ask uh, the viewers, do y'all have any ideas? What, how could you respond to that sabotaging thought or that unhelpful automatic thought? It's vegan. Um, wait, so oh boy. Well, other than saying just that just because it's vegan doesn't mean it's healthy. Yeah. You want, you want more? Sure. Yeah, I want more. Oh boy, I just, what, okay, I just lost the chat. So guys, tell me what you would say. Um, it's not going to help me achieve my goals of, yeah. you know, of maintaining a lean body weight. I, I'm not going to feel great when I eat that. I know how I feel. You know, a lot of times it's yes. really about how you feel in the moment versus how you feel long-term, because when you eat that crap food, which I haven't done in, in like 10 years, you feel like really good for like a moment or two. Yes. Yes. You feel really bad for a long time afterwards. Yes. And that is actually a great uh, strategy, a great sort of mental strategy that I've used before is to remind myself of the aftermath yeah these uh, cracker jacks uh or these uh, lint truffles or, or whatever it is would, would be really pleasurable for a couple of minutes supremely pleasurable and then after that i'm going to feel like you know i'm going to really feel bad about myself i'm going to regret it it might throw me off my food plan for the rest of the day because i'm just going to feel down and want to continue eating uh you know it's might affect the scale reading tomorrow morning um you know uh it also uh, another great thing to remind yourself at this time is that I need to learn to stick to my food plan. And it's probably not sticking to a healthy food plan that got me in this position to begin with. And so every time I deviate, even if it's vegan, uh, it just reinforces that behavior of, of um, doing what I feel like when I feel like it instead of what I had planned to do. Right. And people are posting, is this hurting or helping? Would I enjoy watermelon just as much? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So there you go. And I would encourage you to uh, come up with, as opposed to another food to eat, as reasons not to eat the, uh, you know, reasons not to get off your food plan. So not so much um, uh, alternatives, because once again, we're still looking to fill something probably besides hunger. And the more you can break out of that, that habit of, you know, I want to eat something, therefore I eat. Uh, the less you do that, the less you feed that monster, the more it will die off over time. Yeah, um, absolutely. So uh, there's all kinds of responses, but the main thing is coming up with responses that are meaningful to you. Uh, and one of my favorites was, and still is, um, I can eat what I want when I want, or I can be thin and healthy, but I can't have both. So, you know, in this moment, I can choose Cracker Jacks or I can choose Thin and Healthy. Yeah, you can't have them both at the same time. That's, that's right. Sure. Yeah, that's right. So, um, so that, yes. Are there more uh, unhelpful thoughts on the, on the chat right. there? A Anybody? moment on the lips forever on the hips, Vicki says. <laughs> uh -huh. That's great. And if that, uh, if that one is meaningful, then that's a great one. That's a great one. It's also helpful if you generate a list of these helpful uh, automatic thoughts, these responses to harmful automatic thoughts. If you generate a list and keep it handy, and, and even uh, really the best thing to do is generate a list of, you know, at, at least 10 helpful responses and kind of rehearse them for a while so that they're more likely to be there when you need them. Would this help with people like that? It's not just food, but people like that are trying, struggling to not smoke or drink alcohol. Could this strategy help as well? Definitely. Oh yes. Uh, you know, cognitive therapy is, is a, a leading, uh, is really one of the leading therapies for, um, for addiction and, uh, yeah, for, for addiction. So whether it be smoking or alcohol. So, and these are cognitive, these are derived, these strategies are, you know, derived from cognitive behavior theory and therapy. So so definitely. Um, yeah, so we could, you know, probably what would be most helpful now is if we could look at some some of y'all's um, automatic thoughts from your recent situation and, and take a look at them and see if we can generate some helpful responses and talk about how you might use what you're, what you're learning right now. Jean is saying, remember my why. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a great, that's a great strategy, um, which reminds me of my five fingers strategy, and which is, you know, before I eat something off my plan that I would list five reasons and make sure to use your hands in this. Let's get the, the body involved and not just kind of think about it in your mind really fast, but, you know, 
um, yeah, uh, I want to, I can eat what I want or I can be thin and healthy, but I can't have both. And, um, you know, Cracker Jacks are terrible for the blood sugar. Uh, there's no, they're completely empty calories. And, you know, I want to be able to fit into that uh, little black dress for the reunion. And, and so co coming up with five reasons in that moment um, and counting them off your fingers, all five, you know, your five whys. You know, uh, it, there is a saying, nothing tastes as good as thin feels. Yes. I love that saying. And so, um, so these are the things people often say to me, I know all that stuff. And then I say, but do you know it in the moment? Are you knowing it at the right time? So you have to know it in the moment when you're face to face with a, a craving. And then you have to stop long enough to employ it, you know, uh, to, to look at, to, to kind of bring that information forward in your mind. And so it can kind of squeeze out, squeeze out that craving. And the more you do this kind of thing, the better you will get at it. And again, I would encourage you all to uh, do it in retrospect so that, um, you know, if you succumb to the Cracker Jacks today, uh, tonight, when you can sit down and reflect, you know, what was going through my mind, it, it's okay for me to eat this because, and then, and, and take a look and see if you can generate some good responses for, for why that was not a good idea. Yeah. It's just, it's even with these tools, it seems so hard for people, doesn't it? It is hard. It's funny how, um, how hard it is, you know, to, to just stop for a moment. And uh, which brings me to another, another tip. And that is, and, you know, face to face with the craving and the mind is saying, I'm just going to eat it. Don't, don't, you know, there's no sense in stopping. I'm going to eat it anyway. Um, if you can tell yourself, and this is just another cognitive strategy, uh, I can eat it, but first let me blah, blah, blah. Either I'll eat it, but I'm going to walk around. The, let me walk around the block first and then I can eat it. Or let me do the five fingers and generate five reasons not to eat it. And if I still want it, I can have it. So do whatever you can do to stick to your food plan in that moment. And that might mean um, saying, I can always eat it later if I want it. So um, a lot of people don't want to do that. They're like, but I shouldn't eat it. And yet they go ahead and eat it. So I'm saying, in, in the just do tell yourself whatever you can do to, to stop it in the moment. And, and then again, even if you go ahead and eat it later, you have, you have delayed. So the, the more delay you can put between the urge and the satisfaction of the urge, the, the better you'll get at this. Uh, the longer the delay will be. And, and you'll, you'll learn a lot about yourself. You know, I used to go to Costco and then they would have the little lint truffle samples. So I was like, oh my God, oh my God, I gotta have, gotta have that, gotta have one of those. Uh, and, and then I started making the rule that, well, I can't eat anything while I'm standing. I have to eat everything seated. So then I would sit down in Costco and eat it. So that was actually, that was progress instead of just, I get it and walk around eating it. Um, so then I would sit down, we would find like a, an empty um, pallet or, you know, a pallet of dog food or something and sit on it uh, and we, you know, and eat it slowly and, and enjoy it. And then I said, well, I think the next step is I'm going to wait until I get out to the car. So then I would take my truffles and because uh, I always got one and my friend got one. And he claims to not like chocolate. That's not really true, but he claims that. So I always get the truffle. I would get his truffle. So, you know, take it out uh, to the car. And oftentimes by that point, the moment was was over. Uh, and, and, and finally, when I got to the point where I'm like, well, I'll take it home. And if I still want it after my lunch salad, I can have it. I don't think I ever ate one of those truffles, uh, by the time I got home because the moment was past. So a lot of times, if you can just get past that moment, um, but each time I did it, I got a little stronger, even though for the, for the first little while I was still eating chocolate truffles, but I got gradually stronger and stronger till, it, now I don't even think about them when I look at them. So uh, practice, it really works, but it's a slow, it's a slow process. This learning to work with your thoughts and change, change your mind in this way and to get it to work more in your favor, it takes time, yeah. but it, it's long lasting. One of the things Dr. Lyle has always said, just tell yourself, yes, you can have it, but you have to eat something healthy first. Yes. I love that strategy. And that's, that's often, um, I have one client who has a, a, an issue with nighttime eating, which is very common, uh, but she has done so well and has seen a, a lot of progress by saying, okay, I can have it, but first I have to eat a pound of steamed veggies. 
and that that sounds that might sound like a lot so you don't have to make it a pound but yes um i would make some specific amount you know uh first uh let me eat uh, two pieces of fruit and if i still want uh the cracker jacks or the chocolate biscuits i can have them so uh let me you know and and even while you're eating the chocolate biscuits i would say okay i'm gonna take one or two take a specific amount not the whole box um and then if i want more i can always go get it but this is in, in starting to now we're engaging some control here those those prefrontal cortices so that it's not just out of control because things can get really out of control with a box of cookies or a, you know a box of cracker jacks so the more you can um maintain some control uh the more you learn and the less you'll eat ultimately yep absolutely so now and when i talk about you know cookies and cracker jacks and lint truffles i'm certainly uh with you aj that uh, i it, it's much better to be sos free for your health um, and I found for me that I was never able to, uh, you know, completely exit out successfully. I, I only started to get successful by learning these, uh, a lot of these thinking strategies and the, the other strategies that I talked about. And then I was able to gradually wean myself off sugar enough that I did have a couple of periods of complete abstinence. And, and I was able to do that. Um, and, and it worked, but it never worked when I told myself, after this, I'm never eating chocolate again or sugar again. You know, uh, that never worked for me. So even though I want to encourage you all to work towards uh, being SOS free and, you know, uh, complete whole food plant based. To me, that would be the goal is is inching the way there so that it can be a permanent change this time and not just, you know, you know, a few weeks or months of, of perfection. And then everything goes to hell, you know, because that's no good. That's demoralizing. And um makes you feel bad about it right that that you know i think um you know it's this is hard in general but it's even harder like around the holidays when there's special food yes yes it's very hard and and i always hate it when i get a new client in the in the holidays because it's it's just it's so hard um but this is good we're we're just in although we have i guess we have a holiday weekend coming up but um I treat the holidays just like anything else, which is still trying to control the environment as much as you can. Um, having a food plan, even if you're going to a, you know, a holiday party or a birthday party or a Memorial Day party, you can still make a plan beforehand. You might not know everything that's going to be there, but, but you can still make some kind of plan to give you some uh, control so that this is just not a free for all. These free for alls really uh, can cause people to become re addicted uh, and make it a lot harder to get back on the horse. Um, and I have a friend who did that years ago. He was doing so well. And then he, for his 50th birthday, I believe it was his 50th birthday, he decided to have a free-for-all party for himself. And he never, he never has recovered. And that was like eight years ago. Um, you know, uh, That's certainly- That's incredible. Yeah, that for some people, you it's know. Very, it's so sad. Uh, certainly you, you do need to learn the skill of getting back back on track and that is a good skill to learn and just noticing the thoughts you know like if you have a breakdown and a free-for-all um you know looking back at it what you know what went wrong what could i do differently did i put myself in a dangerous situation you know uh, did i go to a dessert bar <laughs> maybe i shouldn't do that you know in the future um did i what was i telling myself what went through my mind when i when i took the first bite and then when i continued uh to eat what was going through my mind so examining that and uh, uh it's going to be super important so that you can get right back on track yeah that that's the main thing is to to get back on track and to do it quickly because the longer you wait the harder yes. it is i think that's right and to be wary of that sabotaging thought um well i'll get back on track tomorrow tomorrow never comes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's a great response. I love that response. And how many times have you said that? How many times did I say that to myself? I'll, I'll get back on track tomorrow. Therefore, it's okay for me to eat all this chocolate because I'm going to get back on track tomorrow. And finally, when I started learning about this, I was like, hold it. How many times have I said that? I'll get back on track tomorrow. And look where I am. I'm addicted to this stuff. I can't stop eating it. I can't stop thinking about it. It's, it's effing miserable. You know, I, I hate this. That is not true that I'll get back on track tomorrow. Or even if I do, I'll be back here, you know, giving, giving yourself a, a good pep talk and a good, honest reminder, like, wait, that is not true. That's a great example of a, uh, 
I guess it's a true thought. It could be true that you get back on track, but what's not true is that you'll stay on track. I mean, what's true is it's just reinforcing this habit of binging and getting back on track, binge, get back on track, binge, get back on track. So got to stop that, that, that cycle. So Carrie Lynn says, question going out with friends. I just hate going out. There's nothing healthy at restaurants. Any advice? That is a tough one. Um, yes. What, what I do when I go out is I try to control where we go. Basically, you know, I, I if I'm going to, and I pretty much don't go out to eat unless I know what's there ahead of time. Um, and, and mostly I don't go unless at this point it's at, there are certain places like we actually have uh, three places here in town where they have something that I feel good about eating. So I just say, would you like to go to Taco Temple? Would you like to go to uh, Bayside? You know, um, or would you like to go to, you know, Shine Cafe to eat? And then I know I can get something that I feel good about. Um, otherwise, if I was out of town or something like that, I try to go online and look at the menu. Most places have online menus these days so I can plan before I go get there and start seeing all the crazy things that I, that I, you know, my uh, old, uh, my amygdala I want to eat, um, wants to eat, I decide ahead of time what, you know, what I'm going to eat. And that, that's a, that's a great way to go. Yeah. That's, that's so hard. Any questions for Caroline guys, please uh, type them in the chat. Uh, Aaron says, I stress eat on chewing gum. Is that cool? Stress eat on chewing gum. It's not good for digestion. I'm told chewing gum is really bad for us. Is that right? You know, I, I, and I, I since I don't really chew much gum anymore, and maybe that's why I quit. I, I don't remember. Um, so I would say I would probably prefer that you find a different, you know, method of, of dealing with your stress and first identifying your, your thoughts. And they might be about something else, you know, like, Oh my God, work is cr killing me. Or I, I, you know, I'm, um, I can't stand blah, blah, blah. So, so looking at what thoughts are driving the stress, cause there are going to be some, some thoughts or beliefs that are, that are driving, uh, that stress to begin with, and they may not be related to food, but, um, yeah, I mean, I would probably rather see you do some mindfulness meditation or something, you know, some yoga or something along those lines, uh, or walk around the block. I mean, exercise is the best stress reliever, um, but I think I'm with AJ that uh, putting something in your mouth is probably not ideal. Yep. Uh, Susanna says, ah, uh, where did it go? I just saw your comment. Uh, am I blind? Perfect it's abstinence good. is really helping me a lot. Moderation doesn't work for me. I'm an all or nothing kind of gal. People do need to know themselves because for, you know, there's a saying in food addiction recovery that uh, one bite is too many, a thousand bites are never enough. Right, right. Yes. Well, if you are able to maintain abstinence, I'm all for that. That's for sure. And I, I thought that of myself for many years. And uh, unfortunately, partly because of my thoughts, I still kept um, the, 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 the idea, uh, you know, that I'm all or none, that, get, that gave me a lot of permission that when I was on the uh, off the horse that I could eat whatever I want because I, I can't control myself. So that's a, a, you know, an important harmful thought to, to look at, but I say, if you're um, abstaining and, and that's working for you, please, by all means, there's no point in, I would not change that for sure. But, but be aware of that sabotaging thought. If you're currently in the throes of sugar addiction, it's really important to look at your thoughts. What thought is justifying that next bite of sugar? It's okay for me to eat this because I'm addicted. Well, we need to, we need to look at that thought and, um, uh, again, my goal here is to stop the off plan eating in the moment. So, uh, can AJ, can you think of some good responses for that thought? I'm addicted considering that it's, it's being used to, um, justify one's eating in the moment. You know, I, or anybody else. Yeah. If you guys have any comments or, or advice on that. So in the moment, it's again, it's like, where, where are they that they're getting the off plan food? That's the thing. Because sure. if they're in their own house, I think it's going to be really, it's different when they're out and, and right. they can't control the environment. But man, if that's happening in your house, I don't see a real long-term solution because then you're going to have to be using these strategies like every day. Yes. All the time. Yes. I a hundred percent agree. Uh, keep your house clean. 
Um, but if you are, yeah, if you are really addicted, like I used to be, and I kept my house clean, but I would still go out to get it, um, uh, you know, every day and every day I'd be like, I'm not doing this again tomorrow, but then I would go out I, the next day I would wake up and I was really addicted. I just, the, the drive was so strong. Um, so something that you might remind yourself again, uh, is, is the delay ta- going back to the delay tactics. Let me, um, wait an hour. And if I still want it, I can have it. Uh, and these, these things will work. So you're still feeding that, that sugar addiction, but, um, if you cannot maintain abstinence, uh, then this is a way to, to, to get it slowly and over time. So, uh, and, and incidentally, I, I considered myself addicted to, to sugar and I could still get re-addicted. And I know that because of a, an experience I had a couple of years ago after a surgery. Um, but, um, I can eat uh, sugar now and not have a problem, but I rarely do because why would I, <laughs> it's only in, if I'm out and about in a kind of unusual situation uh, that I would do that. Cause otherwise I'd just make my own, you know, healthy date, fruit, sweet treats and what have you. Um, but, uh, but it doesn't re-addict me now, uh, but it, but it could, if I did it too, too frequently and too many days in a row. Um, so that, that's that thought, you know, I'm addicted. I can't help it. Um, if, you know, if you can stop again to say, let me wait an hour and then I can have, if I still want it, I can have it. Or, uh, so that's, that's again, a way to use your thoughts. Those are thoughts that I'm giving myself. Let me wait an hour. And if I still want it, I can have it and, and see what happens over time. So, uh, tomorrow, the same thing is going to happen. I'm still addicted to sugar. Okay. Let me, uh, I'm going to wait an hour and 15 minutes. And then if I still want it, I can have it. And, you know, if you can introduce some other strategies, that would be good too. Like, um, let me wait an hour. And in the meantime, I'm going to call a friend um, or let me wait an hour. And in the meantime, I'm going to take the dogs for a long walk. Um, so uh, the more strategies you can implement, the better. But in this way, you're, you are going to learn uh, more control, uh, strengthen that sort of uh, control uh, muscle, if you will, uh, while, you know, dealing with the sugar. But yes, as long as you're feeding the addiction, it, it will continue. But it's, I don't think it's, it's not impossible to get over mm-hmm. if you're not able to maintain abstinence in a reasonable way. Right. Uh, there's a question from Jean. What is the best way to stop nighttime eating? Uh huh. Well, again, I would say uh, the first thing is, well, besides uh, the, the environment, uh, naturally, um, what's going through your head? What, what's going through your head before you eat at night? You know, that would, that would be the first thing. Um, I have heard of people who, you know, they wake up in the middle of the night and they feel compelled to eat. And again, I would say what, Uh, it's okay for me to eat this because what are they responding? I would love to hear their response if they uh, come up with a response or if anybody else does not time eating and, and they, they have, they know why, what what is the automatic thought behind that? It's okay for me to eat this in the middle of the night because. Yeah. You know, but I, but I, I think what you said is, so true that it's better to just not have to deal with it in your own house. And I wish there was a way we could help people understand the importance of the environment and work with their spouses and families to get them a clean environment, even just for a period of time so that they could see how much easier it is and that they wouldn't have to struggle. Yes. And yes, people will probably have a lot of um, unhelpful thoughts around keeping their environment clean. So let's, let's take a look at that. Um, Or even saying, what about brushing your teeth? Can that help? Yes, that's a great strategy. I would, you know, sort of call that a delay tactic, but yeah, that's a great strategy um, if you can get yourself to do it. Uh, and again, to get yourself to do it, you might need to use some some helpful thoughts like, let me go brush my teeth. And then if I still want it, I can have it, you know? Uh, that, you know, for me, having to wear these weird things in my mouth, both a retainer and a TMJ thing, like once I brush my teeth, I'm not doing it again. I'm, I'm, not, not, I'm not taking those out just to, it's just too much darn darn yes. trouble to do that, you know? Yes, it can and be I, very I don't know if you're familiar with Dr. Roger Gould. I've had him on the show. He wrote a book called Shrink Yourself because he's a psychiatrist. Oh, yes, I do. Yes. Was, and, you know, he talked about what you're talking about, a, a pause that if you can just delay uh, an emotional eating episode, a lot of times it goes away because even if you have a strong craving, I mean, it's different probably like if, if somebody has alcoholism, that's a really, you know, or, or stopping cigarettes, but with food, it waxes and wanes. And, you know, 
like if it, you know, if you, if your child was, you know, about to be hit by a car and you had a craving, you wouldn't be indulging the craving. So in other words, cravings can, you can get yes. rid of them. And you, and that's why like, you know, painting your nails, doing a puzzle, doing something else, distracting yourself can, can really work. Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, it does work. Cravings do wax and wane. And I, I bet most people have discovered that, that you, the craving will go away. And that's a great response. Um, this craving will pass whether I eat or not. But if you indulge it, it actually makes it worse. And that's right. It It doesn't go away. Yes. I I, I think of it as feeding. If I feed the craving, it keeps it alive. But if I, if I starve it, it will eventually, or if I don't eat, it will eventually starve. And, and some of these uh, cravings that we have are kind of habitual. And if you quit feeding them, they will, uh, they will die off eventually. Um, And the other thing to, to watch out for is sometimes people will say, Oh my God, I've been craving all day. But then that is not a helpful thought, right? That, that makes you want to eat. Um, so I would say, is that really true? Have I really been craving all day? And then if you ref- look back on your day, you'll say, well, I was craving for about 15 minutes right after breakfast. And then it came up again about three o'clock in the afternoon and hung around for a few minutes and it was aggravating. But, but really, no, I haven't been craving all day, but, but now the craving is back. It's, it's back in this moment. Um, but, but when we really challenge these automatic thoughts, we can, that can help a lot and realize, them. well, it really wasn't all day. It's just that it's happening right now and I want to eat. <laughs> that's, that's really the bottom line. Um, yeah. I did want to go back to the nighttime eating right quick. So I think the first part is identifying your uh, sabotaging thought there or your unhelpful or your automatic thought that it's okay for me to eat this in the middle of the night because whatever. Uh, but again, a, d- a delay tactic. Um, because probably if you're used to eating in the middle of the night, it's going to be hard to go back to sleep. Uh, so let me actually shift a little bit from delay tactic to um, staying up and out of bed for a little while. If you're used to eating in the middle of the night and, and you find it hard to sleep without that, then you might have to get out of bed for a little while uh, and, and do something, you know, low key. Because uh, the last thing you want to do is be tossing and turning in bed and creating a, um, a negative association to your bed. You want to be able to sleep when you're in the bed and not, not toss and turn. So uh, if you wake up in the middle of the night and, and want to eat, go sit on the couch and some, and read some, something gentle, nothing, don't do anything too exciting or, or stimulating because you, you want to go back to sleep shortly. But uh, that's what I would try first is getting out of bed and, and reading or doing something calm. And when you get sleepy, go back to bed. Uh, uh, you know, and again, you can use that strategy. Let, yeah, let me sit and read for a few minutes, uh, for 15 minutes. And then if I still want to eat, I can, but ideally, you know, wait until you get sleepy and then, and then go back to bed. So, uh, Karen says, do you recommend a reset, like maybe juicing for one to two days in order to break cravings, addictions? Uh, I never found that uh, juicing or doing anything for one or two days broke my broke my addiction to sugar. That's not nearly long enough. So no, I would rather see people actually learn to eat in a, a, a healthy way on a daily basis, because when you're fasting, um, in some ways it's easier to not eat at all. Um, but then you still, you have to eat at some point. So I would rather see people again, follow these four components, the environment, the food plan, the food log, the delay tactics, and now your, your automatic thoughts and learn to eat on a regular basis, because that's what that's the skill you have to learn to to do this forever. Yes. Nice. Okay, I saw another question. Um, okay, here it is from Kathy. Are there any tips when grocery shopping to resist the potato chips and convenient processed vegan foods? Uh-huh. That's a great question, and that's a very common uh, problem that people have, and that's a problem I used to have. Um, although I was never into potato chips, but you know, sweet things or other things, um, first have a list. You got to have a list that that's definitely first and foremost, uh, you know, have a list of what you're going to, of the healthy foods you're going to buy. Um, of course, avoiding that aisle, uh, would be important. Just like your environment. That's just controlling your environment is trying to avoid that aisle if you can. Um, before you go in the store, I would, you know, shore yourself up with your why, like somebody mentioned a while ago, you know, why I'm going to stick to my, my list and why I'm not going to go, you know, go down the potato chip aisle, um, why, why that's important. Uh, so I, I would use a multi-pronged strategy, you know, have, have uh, you know, have your list of, 
uh, advantages to uh, to stick into a healthy food plan or advantages to losing weight. You know, remind yourself of what you're doing before you go in there. And over time, the more you practice these things, the easier it will get. So now I can go to the grocery store and it, I don't I don't even think about it. I'm not tempted to buy those other foods anymore. Um, but for a long time, I was. So you just got to keep at these strategies and don't expect that overnight, you know, if you do all these things, suddenly you're going to be free from addiction and, and uh, you're only going to eat whole plant foods because it, it doesn't work like that, unfortunately. But the more you do the strategies, the more the more they will work. And it kind of starts to change your brain and change it from the inside out. Yep. OK, question from Nancy. I think I came in late, but I want to know what does she offer in terms of coaching? Well, I do a, a year long program, actually. It's, it's very long because it takes a long time for people to change in a permanent way. So I have a, we, you know, we meet uh, 20 times by Zoom, you know, on the Zoom. Uh, early on in the program, we meet more frequently and I have uh, some, have y'all read uh, books and, uh, I, and most of the people who come to me already know about whole food plant-based eating. So we, most of the work we do is on the psychology, is on behaviors and, uh, and automatic thoughts. So uh, and we get to go through every major holiday and we get to go through a birth birthdays and we get to go through all that. And so that they can learn how to apply the skills um, necessary to maintain this for the long haul. And it's not a fast, uh, again, this is not a fast, my program is not a fast weight loss program because I, I want you to learn the skills uh, that you need for it to last forever, not just have you lose some weight and then, and then gain it back again. So yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, Jean a, says her biggest problem is eating after dinner and before bed. Yes. And that's a very common, that's, that's very, that's a very common time to eat. Again, I would uh, go back to your, well, the environment, uh, of course, do you, are these foods that are not really good foods for you to eat? And, and if so, um, the best thing to do is get them out of the house or get them out of your reach. And, and if you have some, and, and if you don't want to do that, pay attention to what are those thoughts? I don't want to get rid of this, um, these chocolate chips because, you know, I want them to be there when I want them. Uh, so and then dealing with those thoughts, uh, most people when they're uh, uh, not always, but most people are eating when they're eating extracurricularly, they're eating stuff. That's not really stuff they want to be eating anyway. Although, uh, at least one of my clients has, you know, eats, it kind of cheats on, um, some of your recipes, chef AJ for the, for the yummy treats. And I think it's great to have uh, yummy treats, but ideally we plan for them so that you're not feeding that, um, spontaneous eating urge, you know, like I feel like eating, so I'm going to just eat something. And, you know, um, uh, you can, uh, these treats are delicious. Uh, so especially if you eat this way, they taste, they're like candy, you know? Um, so you can, that can get in your way of weight loss if you're eating too much of the, uh, dessert things. Uh, and, and I believe me, I love, I love dessert. So, <laughs> so it's, you know, it's something I have to deal with too, but, um, uh, so make sure your environment is clean and, but just notice those thoughts. It's okay for me to eat this food right now because, um, you know, uh, there's a uh, live viewer that's saying plan your shopping trip after a meal. So you're full or start using online shopping. So you don't go to the store at all. Yeah, that's a great strategy. And one of my clients finally did that because she had such a hard time going to the grocery store. So she just started ordering it online and they deliver it. And that has been a good strategy for her. So I think uh, this is a multi-pronged approach. I, again, um, a lot of people come to me and they, I think they're looking sort of for a cure, but um there's a lot of, there's a lot of aspects to my program, a lot of what we've discussed here today. And, and it takes a lot, uh, changing the way you eat permanently. It, it's going to affect uh, the UPS man just drove up. It's going to affect, um, everything, you know, every part of your, uh, existence and, and it's worth it. It's well worth it. Uh, I love eating this way. Y'all. I love the food, you know, 20 years ago, even 15 years ago, I, I probably would not have thought I could love this way of eating, but I love it just as much as I love the other way of eating the vegan junk food way of eating. Um, and you can too, but you just have to get over that, uh, the hump and it, and it can be uncomfortable. Yeah, it can be. But like I said, start with that clean environment, give them, give yourself the clean, the gift of a clean environment, just, just for like a few weeks and see if it makes a difference. 
Yes. And don't, don't succumb to the sabotaging thought. Well, it's my problem. I should have to deal with it. My husband shouldn't have to do without that food in his house or my kids shouldn't have to do without that food because then you're going to stay stuck. Um, it is very hard. And, 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 and you know, you're, the people in your household might be saying this is your problem, but it, it's not uh, just like any other addict, you know, smokers who are trying to quit cannot be around other smokers and drinkers who are trying to quit. They can't keep going to the bar and hanging out with their friends. And, and it's the same with this problem. It's uh it's just going to wear you out. So as much as you can, you know, work with your family and see if you can get their, their support. If they're not willing to keep it out of the house, then find some way to keep it out, out of you, away from you. you. You shouldn't be looking at it or smelling it um, uh, or anything. It's, it's not really realistic or, or even hardly possible to, to live like that. If I lived with somebody who had bread and cheese in the house, I wouldn't, we wouldn't be having this conversation. Right. Because remember, in the immortal words of Chef AJ, if it's in your house, it's in your mouth. Oh, this is great. <laughs> Thank you so much. If people want to get in touch with you, we have your information right below in the show notes if they want to check out your program. Cool. Sounds good. Thank you. It's been so fun. I love talking so, about this. Stuff. I know me too. Cause like we're, we're really kindred spirits. I mean, I think when you get it, you get it. And I think if, if people, I, I really, my wish for everyone is they could experience freedom around food. Yes, me too. It's not fun. And I've read your story uh, and it's horrible being addicted. Uh, it's just horrible. It's a nightmare and uh, it's, it's so much better this way. Great. Well, thank you so much, Caroline. Okay, you're welcome. Bye. See you next time. Take care. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when my guest is Lauren Kretzer. She is an extraordinary, talented vegan chef and cancer survivor. Take care.